Wow. Amazing God. Hey, can we give God just a great praise while you're standing? Let's just, let's just bless him. Let's just bless him. Let's just take a minute and say, God, we thank you. You brought us into 2018. We thank you. You're doing great things. We thank you. I'm on the right road tonight. We thank you. High five a couple people on your road. Tell them you sit next to the right one. You're sitting next to the right one. Yeah. Pop, you got your boots on tonight? <laughs> My father-in-law got his good boots on tonight. Listen, I'm excited about what God is going to do tonight. Does anybody else ha have an anticipation of what God... I want to acknowledge that we have some AKAs in the house. The Distinguished Women of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. We want to celebrate y'all. A lot of the young women in my family uh, rock the pink and the green, and so we just want to honor you guys. And just grateful for every visitor. Um, and we've, we've, we've been in the Speed Series. How many people have been here for most of, if not all of, the Speed Series? First week was the Speed of Purpose. Next week was the speed of authority. Third week was the speed of? Now, oh, well, amen. <laughs> Come on. And so before I tell you what this week is, and if you've been on social media, then you may already know, but a couple of weeks ago, one of my friends um, was uh, battling because his mother uh, had uh, some significant health challenges. And, uh, at one point was unconscious. They didn't know how it was going to go. They didn't know what was going on. But we spoke a word of authority and declared something very significant would happen by the time he got back to the hospital. Then he came up last week and told us that his mama listened to the word and started trying to dance in the bed with the word. Well, I have another update for you. She's here tonight. I need y'all to put the camera. I wish somebody would give God. Hey! Ah, hallelujah! to take a picture, because that's what a miracle looks like. Hey. Now, I don't know why, after being in the hospital, not sure if she was going to make it, she's the only one dancing. So I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. What a thing about Jesus! What is up for me? What a thing about Jesus! How he set me free like it!
It started because her son had enough faith to leave the hospital, get to the church, and get in agreement with some people that had faith to believe. This is tangible evidence that the right people at the right moment can produce a miracle in your life. Why you saying it? Let me pray for you because I feel it on there. I feel the Holy Ghost in here tonight. I hope you don't have anywhere to go because I feel like preaching. Father, in the name of Jesus, in this atmosphere, we declare your word goes forth and does miracles tonight. We love you, we honor you, we bless you. Jesus, save souls, change lives, heal relationships, restore identity. Do what only you can do. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. You got 15 seconds to give God a crazy, rowdy, radical. Tell somebody it's one of those nights. We're in the speed series. Who you're connected to could very well push you into the next thing God has for you. Tonight I want to talk from the subject heading the speed of relationships. The speed of relationships. <laughs> like, yes, Jesus, I've been waiting on this word, Jesus. <laughs> We're going to get to that in a minute, Sierra. Um, no, no. We're going to get to that in a minute. Somebody say the speed of relationships. First thing you need to know is God is positioning people in key places of influence and authority whose primary desire is to give God glory. I'm going to say that again. This is... This is the, the foundational premise from which I want to share and convey this message tonight. This is a season not for people who have career attainment objectives exclusively. This is a season for believers to be put in key positions of power and authority who ultimately want to bring God glory. What that means is that it doesn't mean that you'll go to, to your job and you'll preach because you go to your job to work. But you are so excellent at what you do that people are going to ask you why. And when they ask you why, you get to tell them, well, you don't know what God has done for me. Am I talking to anybody? God is about to set you up in a position of influence and authority so people can ask you, why do you always smile? How come you always have joy? Everybody else around here can't stand to get in here, but you love coming in here. It's raining outside and you smiling. Well, let me tell you what Jesus has done for me. And I know that if there's rain, there must be a harvest on the way. God is positioning people to be in key positions so that God can get glory out of the situation. So the question you need to ask yourself is, can God get glory out of your life? It's a question you should write down and then you should literally weigh and filter every opportunity and every person that comes into your space through that lens. Is this an opportunity for God to get glory? Does this relationship help me produce glory? Or does this relationship diminish the glory that God has already placed on my life? Woo, I feel God in here already. I done sweated through my shirt, then lost six pounds off. Here's what I need you to know. Sometimes as faith-filled believers, we can become so 
supernatural in our approach to the things of God that we miss, that God is very much at work in the earth. What I mean by that is, I know some of you are like, God, I just believe you're going to, you're going to give me millions of dollars. You're going to send it, God. Send your angels, God. And I need you to know that angels don't have bank accounts. My point is this, they're not going to be like, Lord, did you want me to fly down there and get, no. No, see, there's not going to be a supernatural drop off from angels at your door. You know what God's going to do? He's going to give you an idea. And then he's going to give you breath in your body. Then he's going to give you an alarm clock and you'll have to get up and then you'll have to walk and brush your teeth, put your clothes on, and then you'll have to go do things. I, I feel the Holy Ghost. See, we're ready to shout and we're waiting on God and God is waiting on... Whatever is about to come into your life, God is using a person to bring it. Tell somebody, be nice to me. You'd be, you be surprised, Queenie. Some of us have missed our blessing because we assume because of the external look of an individual, they had nothing to offer us. You were sitting next to a multimillionaire. You better think the next time somebody look ashy, you better, how you doing? Lord bless you. Did you, would you like some coffee? Get this man a Starbucks. Somebody, what, you want, you want a sandwich too? You don't, <laughs> you don't do it for that purpose, but my point is this. Don't assume you know which way God is coming or who he's going to use to bring blessing into your life. Whatever is coming, God is using a person to bring it. So this is a moment to discern the necessity of each relationship in your life. Who's who? Why are you here? What's your purpose? What is your intent? And how long you staying? <laughs> because if you come up and be talking about you love me, then that means you're talking about a forever type of situation. But don't, don't talk forever if you plan on staying for a few weeks. <laughs> Can I get an amen from some for real people? But the truth about forever is this, forever is a mighty long time, and forever isn't all good, because some of that forever is going to be some painful things. So if you talk in love and you talk in forever, then you need to understand that that means you're going to see me in some not so savory moments, and that means you're going to have to make a choose, a choice to love me in spite of what you see, because love was never what I feel, it's always what I do. Because we watch too many movies, the emotion of love will make you think that you have to feel something in order to stay in love. Because love is not the feeling, it's the thing you do in spite of what you feel sometimes. Life is moving at the speed of relationships. This is the moment, and I'm prophetically declaring that this is a season where God is connecting people to the right people for the righteous purpose that God has intended for the earth. So what I want you to do is just take a quick glance in your, you know, close proximity, a couple rows around, just look around, because I believe you're looking at a part of your purpose. There are some people that are in, in this church right now that are a part of your purpose. Look at him, girl, he got all his teeth, I'm just saying. Look at him. No ring, look at him. No tan line. He didn't take it off. It's not. <laughs> there are four areas of relationship I want to touch upon. I need you to write these down. The first thing is I want to talk about your relationship to God. Your relationship to God. Number two, we're going to talk about marriage, singles. We're going to talk about relationship, married, spouses, singles, family. Then we're going to talk about friends and professional relationships. And finally, purpose. The singular, most important relationship to cultivate is the one that we have between God and ourselves. I know that it's sometimes not the most exciting because God is not this visible, tangible, physical individual that we can touch, see, 
grab, but it is the single most important relationship that we have to cultivate. Genesis 1.26, God said this, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And then he gives, of course, man purpose, he says, and let him have dominion over the beast of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the face of the earth. God says, let us make man according to our image and our likeness. And from that point, it is clear that God gave man, Adam, the red man, or the ruddy man, or the man from the clay, he gave Adam a, a unique relationship to him that angels did not have. It is established that God created man for the purposes of intimate fellowship and exchange rooted in free will. Got to write this down, free will. See, this is the difference between you and angels, because when angels messed up, they got kicked out of heaven. But you and I, we have free will. That's what makes the devil so mad. He messed up once, he out of there. We mess up every day. God still wants to hear from us. Somebody needs to thank God for the grace that we have, that, that you and I have walked away from God, and he's still faithful to us. You and I have made bad choices, and we know we don't deserve his love, his mercy, or his forgiveness, but he's sitting there like a loving father saying, I just can't wait for them to turn. And when they turn around, I've got a blessing for them. I've got healing for them. I've got deliverance for them. Is there anybody that's grateful that God is faithful when we are faithless? The Bible says, when we are faithless, he is faithful, for he cannot deny himself. And so this idea of this, this vertical relationship, this exchange, this, this place of free will, this is where your worship counts. See, God doesn't force you to worship. I know there are times, and I've been there before, there are people like me, you've been in church, and they're playing a song, you're like, I don't feel it. Anybody ever been there? You've been at a service? And I'm like, I don't feel it. I'm not talking about this church, it's another church. <laughs> He's like, I don't want to embarrass nobody, but I didn't, I didn't even know that song. No, what I'm saying is this. Here's the thing about worship. Worship isn't about what you feel, it's about who God is. And who God is does not change whether you're having the best day of your life or the worst day of your life. Talk to me, Job. Naked I came into the world, naked I shall return. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That was a strange, offensive response. The devil didn't expect that response when he hit Job with the loss of his children and the loss of his property and the loss of his income and the loss of his status and the loss of his health. And he had the nerve to worship when everything was gone. And this is the power of the story. What you do at your lowest is what you are at your highest. And I need a 10 second praise break right there. Nine, eight, seven, six, I got to worship when it doesn't feel good. I got to worship when it's hurting. I have to worship when I failed him. I've got to worship when all of my bills are not yet paid. I've got to learn how to give him a hallelujah even when he's correcting me, even when he's adjusting me, even when he's dealing with me. It does not change the power of God or the holiness of God. And so I lift up my hand. And there are those, Mike, who say that, you know, their expression in worship is muted. Respect. I understand that. But catch them at a Texans game. You always show emotion for the thing that matters. Catch them at a Rockets game. T-Max scored 21 in like 13 seconds. Remember when you did that? By the way, we got a Hall of Famer on the front row. Tracy McGrady is here. His beautiful wife, Clorinda. I went on YouTube and I watched that. You, how many points did you score? 13 in how many seconds? 35 seconds. Yes. That's why he's in the Hall of Fame. There were some people that were screaming and there were others that were shocked because they had never seen anything like it, so they didn't know what to do. So their response was delayed. I, I believe he's here prophetically to let you know that what God is about to do 
is going to happen so fast that no one has ever seen it and you won't even be able to worship while it's happening. You will have a delayed reaction. So if I were you, I'd worship right somebody to give God a crazy praise right there. I feel something breaking off of people right there. God's about to shake your life so fast that you won't even have time to get hallelujah out of your mouth before the next thing shows up. Blessing on blessing on blessing. I just need one man of God to agree with me. I just need one person, get one person that'll agree with you. Just say it's coming to your life. Get one person, tell them it's coming to your life. Brandon, that's two people. You cheated. It's coming to your life. You won't even have time to shout. You won't even have time to get into your worship. You won't even have time. Before you can get the prayer out, the answer is there. Before you call, I will answer. And come. People think God is a game. He's about to show the world. I'm going to use you to get glory. I hear the Lord saying, I'm going to use you to get glory. Your family thinks you crazy, but I'm going to show them you weren't crazy when you were serving. You weren't crazy. You weren't crazy. You were hearing from God. You weren't crazy. You were hearing from God. You walked away from what looked good, but you looked. It looked good, but it didn't look God. Woo! That's for one of my sisters in here. He looked good, but he didn't look God. Any man that gets nervous when you start worshiping, that's a sign. That's a sign. That's a sign. Brother, if she don't want to read the Bible with you, she can't carry your destiny. That's a sign. That's a sign. If all she wants to do is show you what she's working with, that's a sign because that's all she's working with. And once that's gone, you'll have nothing. But you better find a woman that knows how to roll, shake, rest, kebe, rosh, kaba. Devil, get off of my family. You can't have my husband. You can't have my children. You... I feel God in this church tonight. I've got to cultivate my relationship with God because even though I dwell in time, I was created for eternity. And when I worship, I exchange my temporal for the eternal. I trade my placement for limited vision to unlimited sight. When I worship, heaven visits earth. When I worship, time and eternity get mixed up. I didn't even realize it's been an hour. It felt like only a few moments. Ah, because a day is as a thousand years to the Lord. Is there anybody that's ever been caught up in the rapture? But you have to choose to worship on that level. See, that's that autonomy. The, the highest beauty of humanity is our autonomy. And the lowest ugliness of humanity is rooted in that same autonomy. For in free will, we choose what we want to do. Because in free will is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And there are some things that we have chosen, you and I, that are not beneficial to the long-term plan of God. But how grateful are you that God didn't allow you to sabotage his purpose with you and I, you and I are bad decisions. Is anybody else grateful? 
And why is it so important to cultivate your relationship with God? Because it is in your communion with God that you find out who you are. See, the purpose of intimate fellowship between God and Adam was not because God wanted to know Adam, he created him, he knew him inside and out. It was for Adam to know himself so that he could properly function in his purpose. Because when you know who you are, because you've been spending time with God, you have a different level of swag. You have a different level of authority. When a man handles himself with God, he has authority to tell his wife, this is the direction of the house. And I want the kids going to bed at 830 and they're not watching YouTube. They're only five years old. I don't know what's on there and I can't govern all of that. And no, they're not eating processed food. They're going to eat them vegetables and, or, or they're not going outside. You're not going to do what you want in my house. When a man gets a vision from God, when, when a woman sees that her man has a vision from God, her look changes. Oh, mm, my God. Yes. 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 Communion with God gives you identity. Somebody say identity. identity. Next, I want to talk about this whole relationship thing, marriage and relationships. Where are my single folk? <laughs> healthy marriages start with being healthy as a single. Here's why. Because what you don't address in your singleness will be multiplied in your marriage. I didn't know how selfish I was until I got married. I didn't know how committed I was to loneliness until I got married. See, I grew up as an only child. I never had to share, not even just my things, but my heart. And it wasn't until my wife kept asking me, how you feeling, and what's on your mind? And I kept saying, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. But inside I was screaming because there was still a four and a half year old boy that was abused on the front lawn of his house, 806 East Mitchell, that never healed. And I kept all of that stuff in and it kept piling up and piling up. And every now and then it would manifest in certain ugly ways. And she had no clue because I had kept it in because I had committed myself that no one would ever understand me. And if I ever showed her that part of me, she would walk away. But here's the power of understanding who you are and who God brought into your life is when you get the revelation that God actually caused marriage for the purposes of producing not only glory but a legacy. I'm trying to help the single folk in here. Here's the difference between, between good and God. Many singles get caught up because they have a preference. And that's why marriages of preference don't always last. Stop marrying for preference and start marrying for purpose. When you're healthy, single, when you know who you are, you won't settle. You, don't, you won't do just anything. You won't just let him walk all over you. You won't let her do whatever she wants. How many of us have regretted some of our personal preferences? Can I get an amen? You know God was like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. You're like, uh-uh, I'm tired. I'm tired of being the only one at the party. I'm tired of being at the wedding by myself. I ain't catching another bouquet of flowers. I'm tired. <laughs> but then you get with the person that was your preference, and they speak to every insecurity you ever had. Come on up, PJ. I need PJ Morton to help me. For those who don't know, PJ Morton is is just a, a phenomenal musician. He's uh, nominated for two Grammys and... Uh, every now and then, see PJ, people get caught up with the wrong stuff because when you start walking into relationships of preference versus purpose, you start getting insecure. Driving behind folk. Three and four cars behind trying to see where they going. in a relationship arguing, little stuff, get angry. And then, don't let him leave his phone out.
You see, some things are better left unknown. What is his code? What is his code? I'd rather keep living in my daydream. Keep thinking that things are just worth this. Who is this? That's my sister. You don't have a sister. <laughs> now you all outside of yourself. You angry. You knew he wasn't God's purpose for your life. You got caught up now. You insecure, going through his stuff, going through his phone. That ain't even your character, girl. You know how amazing you are, the purpose God has on your life. Fellas, the same thing goes for you. Sometimes, fellas, we get a good woman and don't know what to do with her. I'm not going to talk about these sisters. These sisters out here, they want a man who loves God, who will honor them, who will take care of them. And too many men are playing games. And you need to stop all of that and grow up and make a decision and get you a wife and stop playing these games so you can have a legacy. Real quiet, man, like, man, you messing me up, man. You, I don't even know why you brought me in here tonight. This is crazy. <laughs> I remember when, when me and Aventure were, were dating, courting, and one night we had an argument. It was at her, at her house, and I got in my car. And I was trying to be all whatever. I was like, girl, whatever. I got me a convertible. I'm gone. <laughs> I got in the car, and the Holy Ghost said, you better not pull off. Now, pride was like, Psh. I'm in Atlanta. <laughs> it's plenty of fish in the sea. <laughs> he was like, don't get hooked up with the wrong one. He said, that's my daughter in there. So then I had to go knock on the door, swallow my pride. <laughs> And I was like, please don't walk away from me. Give me a little bit of that one, PJ, just a little bit. Please don't walk away from me. Oh, baby, stay with me. Don't go, don't leave. Just stay with me. Please don't walk away from me. Oh, baby, stay with me. Don't go, don't leave. Just stay with me. Don't ever leave me, don't ever leave. Don't ever leave me, don't ever leave. Don't ever leave me, don't ever leave. Don't ever leave me, don't ever leave me. Don't ever leave me, don't ever leave. Don't ever leave me, don't ever leave. Don't ever leave me, don't ever leave. Don't ever leave me, don't ever leave me. Good morning, now. It's me again. We in this church, but service is almost over. Get on home. Please wear your shoes. The rest can go. You won't lose. So don't ever leave me. Don't ever leave. Don't ever leave me. Don't. If you marry, get your boo right now. Single people, don't get mad. You'll get a boo. Just let the married people. Don't ever leave me. Don't ever leave me, don't ever leave me, don't ever leave. Don't ever leave me, don't ever leave me, don't ever leave me. Hold her hand. Hold that girl's hand. Every married couple, if you're if you are here and you are married, or you are married but your spouse is not here, then I want you to hold your own hand. I'm about to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, play that a little bit, PJ. I pray for a refreshing in every marriage. Because the enemy hits marriage hard because he hates what it represents to the kingdom of God. And I declare that you will bless every marriage, that you will strengthen the bonds and the cords of the covenant, that no matter what the devil has tried to do, 
all of it together will fail and fall in the name of Jesus. Whether it's emotional, spiritual, physical, or financial, it all dies, shrivels where it is, and rekindle the original purpose and intent so that every couple leaves here tonight knowing they are exactly with the one that was purposed for their life and anything else that whispers opposite is a lie. Somebody give God a great praise right there. Uh-uh, we need to give God a real praise right there. Now, where are my single people at? Because I need to encourage y'all, because right now, y'all like, can I slow dance? I got two more points, and then we can head home, but I just got to get you this thing. Write this down, Jacob. Jacob. See, because Jacob was two people. And in Genesis 28, God gave Jacob, who was single at the time, a word from heaven that said, I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to do something in your life that is so significant that every family on earth will be blessed through your descendants. God gave him the word in Genesis 28. In Genesis 29, you know who he meets? Rachel. Now, Rachel is his preference. But his preference could not produce purpose. And out of God's love, <laughs> Jacob, who was tricky, got tricked. And on the night of his honeymoon, he ended up becoming one with Leah. And the Bible says he was angry with his father-in-law Laban and said, you gave me the one I didn't want. And even that was a purpose because the devil will whisper to us in our marriage and say, you know you could have chose somebody else. Let me tell you something. God loved you so much that he gave you your purpose in spite of your preference. I, somebody's going to get healed. You can't clap right now because they're going to know that, you know, there was some drama with y'all. So just be like, <laughs> apparently he's talking about someone else because I love her. <laughs> She's amazing. <laughs> Single people, please understand that God is releasing people into covenants, and I'm prophesying now. For, for a few people, I I'm not saying everyone, but I believe that there are people in this room that you will this year not only meet the person God has purposed, but you will this year get married. So get out of your mind the 12 to 18 month window. You're going to know it's God. Y'all going to walk that thing out. You'll get godly counsel. Listen to me. I bind that spirit and let's try to save some money. I had negative $11 when I got married, and now we have a little more than negative $11 seven years later. And so it's not about what you got coming in by yourself. It's about what God can do with the both of y'all submitted to one another. I'm trying to help some single folk. Now, I'm not saying that you both should not be gainfully employed and moving in purpose. My point is this, if that's the only thing you want, you might miss God. Jacob was immature in key areas of his development, therefore he wanted Rachel because Rachel was surface, Leah was substance. I'm doing, I'm preaching good, P. But here's the thing about moving at the speed of relationships. God loves you so much that he's not going to allow relationships that are not going to produce fruit for his glory to remain. So some of y'all need to thank God for what he left out of your life, let move out of your life, took out of your life. Some of y'all single folk need to thank God because he saved you from years of misery. God, marriage, family. Now let's talk about these friends and professional relationships. Write it down, Matthew 17. Jesus went up to the Mount of Transfiguration, a high mountain. Who'd he take, y'all? Peter, James. But he had 12 disciples. Why'd he only take three? Because everybody can't go. 2018, everybody can't go. Write it down. Get it in your spirit. Get that in. Hey, team, everybody can't go. Listen, God is elevating you in this season. Everybody can't go where you're going, and so it's okay. It doesn't mean that they're not going to heaven. doesn't mean God doesn't have a purpose, but there are people that were sufficient for 2017 that may not make it to the deeper places of purpose in 2018, and that's okay. You need God to identify for you the Peter, James, and Johns of your life. 
Why? Because you need people that will stick and stay through the most broken moments of your life. I don't want fans, I want friends. John 15, 13, Jesus said, listen, I no longer call you disciples because, or servants, because servants don't know what their master is doing. Now I call you friends because I've told you everything the Father has told me. When you have friends, you can tell them the truth and they'll love you and then cover you. Can I get an amen for both? Don't do one and not the other. Don't love me and then text about me. Don't love me and then DM about me. I need you to love me and cover me. So if you see something that God is processing or developing, if you're my real friend, you'll cover me. And even if somebody else is talking about it, I don't even know what you're talking about, but that's my friend and you can't talk about them in my presence. Somebody get you in a group feed on some foolishness. Hey, get me out of this group. You're not going to talk about my friend. Matter of fact, put your friend in the group. Hey, they were talking about you. I figured you might want to know. They talking about you, but I know you helped them with their rent last month. Isn't it funny? People will try to minimize what you've done in their life just so they can feel better about their own stuff. Come on, Holy Ghost. And so we've got to understand the speed of relationships when it comes to God, marriage, your singleness is producing in you a patience and it is developing in you an individual identity that is rooted in Christ alone. So when or if God brings someone into your life, they complement your purpose and you move in destiny together. You are not so thirsty to be with another human being that you lay down your morals, your ethics, and your values to get them. And then finally, purpose. We always read Jeremiah 29 and 11, but you really need to start reading it, that sixth verse. Because the truth of Jeremiah is that the children of Israel were in captivity. And the word of the prophet was, you need to pray while you're in captivity. I'm just talking to the people who feel like life's not moving as fast as you need it to. There's some things that kind of have you hemmed in. God says, pray in that place, because while you're praying for the place that holds you captive, God's going to bless you while you're right there. You got to read it. You got to be really mature to hear what I just said. The places that seem to be restricting to you and causing you greatest pain, God says, pray for that area, pray for those people, because while you're in that situation, God's going to produce so much glory out of your life that you will look blessed even though it'll still be a captive situation. And then we know that he says, for I know the plans I have towards you, declares the Lord, thoughts of good and not evil to give you a future and a hope. Even in the midst of broken situations, God can still produce purpose. And then in John 12, Jesus said this, now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Write this down, because your relationship to God Marriage, family, single, professional relationships and friendships are great. But your relationship to your purpose is what I want to have you leave with. Because your purpose is the thing you were created for. But Jesus says, my soul is troubled. But what, you, shall I say, deliver me from this? No, but for this purpose I was born. And then he said, Father, glorify your name. Two principles that you need to grab. Number one. Sometimes there's trouble on your way to purpose. Anybody that tells you your purpose, the devil's going to come on in, just do what you want. I, was, I ain't even going to fight. That's a lie. Jesus lets us know there is trouble as you head towards purpose. But number two is the one where you shout. God's still going to get glory. So trouble will come in the life of a believer. Transition comes in the life of a believer. But it's still going to produce glory if you stay submitted to God, if you develop 
the necessary places of relational commitment if you are married to your husband or your wife, then to your family, your children. If you are single, that you are committed to the things of God, the kingdom of God, the local church, and then you identify the right friends and professional relationships that line up with the purpose for which you were called. And then everything else that you cannot handle, everything else that you cannot take care of on your own, you're going to have to let go. As soon as I stop worrying, worrying how the story ends, when I let go and I let go, I let God have his way. That's when things start happening. I stopped looking at back then. When I let go and I let go, I let God have his way. I couldn't seem to fall asleep. There was so much on my mind I was searching for that peace Glory. But the peace I could not find oh, 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 so then I knelt down to pray I was praying, help me please Then he said, you don't have to cry Cause I'll supply all your needs As soon as I stop worrying Worrying how the story When I let go and I let go I let God have his way That's when things start happening when I stopped looking at back then When I let go and I let go I let, break it down right here, so just do it Just let go Let go And let go Let go Just let go Let go And let go Let go Let go And just let go Oh, just let go let God, cause you can't handle it by yourself, just let go, and just let God, oh let go, and let God, yeah, oh let go, and let God, yeah, let go, and let God, all the way down right here, one more time, just say it, as soon as I stop the word, somebody worship. Worrying how the story When I let go and I let go I let God have his way That's when things start happening and I stop looking at back One minute, one minute. If you're here, you've never given your life to Jesus, or you need to recommit your life to Jesus, there is no better moment than right now. The most important relationship is your relationship that your soul will have with the Savior who died for it. If you've never given your life to Jesus, you did not know that his blood was shed to pay for your sins, this is your moment. If you need to rededicate your life, this is your moment, and on the count of three, this is what I want you to do. On the count of three, if you need to give your life to Jesus or you need to rededicate, I want you to wave both of your hands in the air like you are being rescued if I'm talking to you. One, 
Jesus loves you. Two, he died for you. Three, this is your moment. Wave your hands in the air if you're letting go and letting God. Keep waving your hands. Keep waving your hands. Come on, y'all. Keep waving your hands. People are giving their lives to God. They're rededicated. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Just let go. Let go. And let go. Let go. Oh, let go. And just let go. just lifted your hands. I want you to pray this prayer with me and those who are here. Pray it along with your brothers and sisters. Lord Jesus, it's me. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for the blood that was shed for me. My life is moving at the speed of relationships. My relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I believe that he died for me. My sins are paid for. You are my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. We believe if you prayed that simple prayer, you just got saved. Somebody celebrate God.